Okay, in this tutorial, we're just going to create a kind of like a racing poster, a uh, motorsports poster. So, uh, new file, new file, and we're going to make this an 8 by 10, 10 by 8 actually, and 300 resolution RGB black background. And we'll go ahead and create the documents. And once that's open, we can add um, some cars in there. And I'm just going to grab file, place embedded. And this is going to take me into racing, go lot motorsports. And I kind of have, let's go ahead and grab this Firebird. Okay, so just depending on what image that you are using, uh, this is just going to be one image that I'm just going to kind of use a couple different times uh, to create what I'm looking for. So uh, once this is placed here, I'm going to hold down uh, my Alt key and scale it up a little bit more and place it maybe right about like so. And once it's all sized to the size that you want, I'm going to go ahead and instead of it and being a smart object, I'm just going to go ahead and rasterize it. I'm not going to do anything else with it uh, size wise. So uh, we can leave it at this. Okay, so when, once we have it all sized out and ready to go, I'm going to, I know I shot this um, photo with a, a really fast shutter speed, like probably at least over a thousand, maybe 1250, maybe. 3200. I, I really don't remember, but I know um, that it was shot with a very fast shutter. So there's no there's no actual blur going on anywhere um, in the image. And we're, we're going to create some blur. So how we're going to do that first is we're going to uh, make a copy of this uh, layer controller command J. And I'm just going to go ahead and turn this one off. Now, uh, next step, let's grab a uh, we can just grab a lasso tool will be fine and i'm just going to kind of go around the picture doesn't have to be perfect at all um, just kind of go around the car like this and then we're going to go up to uh, edit fill and then content aware fill so it's probably yours will probably say uh, foreground color just click the drop down and go to content aware and we'll hit ok and that's just going to fill it in. That may take a, a little bit of time depending on your computer speed. My computer speed is either slow or slower. So uh, this is what we're working with here. And the, of course, too, the bigger the file that you're, you're doing, the longer it's going to take the process um, depending on your computer. So uh, one of these days we'll get a, a better system. All right, so it uh, filled it in decently enough, so we can go ahead and hit uh, Control or Command D to deselect that. And then we're going to just call this layer the uh, background blur layer. Yeah, yeah, enter. All right, so what we want to do now, uh, it may or may not work out really well, but eh, it probably will. Let's just, just take a look first. Um, probably like this right here. Let's go ahead and, and do something with that. Let's go to our uh, spot healing brush and just kind of stamp over this one. And maybe let's just go over this again. This area here is probably not going to matter that much because the car is going to be there. But uh, all right. OK, so let's go up to filter and then we're going to go to blur gallery and then path blur. Then path blur is going to set us up with um, with some effects that we can use on here to just blur this whole uh, background, kind of like in a motion. Um, when this comes up, also you see it's updating. Um, if you don't see this line here, um, just hit Control or Command H, and that will show or hide the line. And what we want to do here is I'm just going to click on this first point, and drag it down. And then click on the second point and drag it in the direction of the track. All right. So, and then we're going to just kind of put a couple more lines in there. Just kind of 
cut your lines. Let's delete this. Just put your lines in the kind of the same angle, I guess you would call it, that your um, that your track is facing. This is not going to be super important um, right now. Let's turn our center blur off, and then we're going to bring our speed up to like a hundred and. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to say 250-ish, and then I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. It's going to take a while for this to render uh, on my computer, so we'll be right back. All right, so once it's rendered out, we want to go back to our car layer because we're going to have to um, cut the car out. <laughs> so easiest way, not the easiest way, the best way is to use your pen tool. I'm going to control plus. I'm going to make this a little bit larger. And we're just going to go around and it doesn't have to be a super perfect cutout, but we'll make it as close as possible. Okay, once you get to your last point, you'll see that little circle come up um, and that will close off your path. <laughs> and we want to uh, make a selection out of this. So if for whatever reason you are all the way out here and you right clicked, it would come up with this weird um, menus things that you can do. That's not what you want. You had to click, make sure you're clicking inside your document or inside the selection. So if we right click, we want to go to make selection. And then the feather zero anti-alias on new selection. We'll hit OK. And it will make a selection out of the car. And then we can just go ahead and hit our uh, mask button. And we now have um, the mask that reveals our car only. All right. So as it sits, it kind of looks kind of looks funky, right? So it just kind of Looks like we blurred the background and cut out a car and pasted on top, but no worries. We're gonna we're gonna do some things here. All right, so uh, the original car image that's cut out, we're gonna make a copy of this. Control J. We're gonna turn this one off, and then we're gonna click on our layer mask, right click, and then click Apply Layer Mask. So we just have this car uh, cut out here. Okay, and I'm gonna make one more copy of it. So Control J, and now. We're going to make the tires spin a little bit. So to do that, go under Filter, uh, Blur Gallery, and then we'll go to Spin Blur. And the Spin Blur is going to basically, you guessed it, grab the Spin Blur. So move it, basically move that center point to the center point of what you're trying to make Spin Blur. Okay, we can do that. So it's right on the um, hub there. And we can size it down like so. And then <clears throat> we need to make it more of a like an ovally shape. So if you see, you have um, these little lines in and out like that. That's not what we want. We want to come out till that till that um, little curvy arrow comes, and then we can just we can make it more of an oval. Okay, so like so, and then maybe. Maybe let's do it a little bit bigger because we can still use a mask. We're going to rotate it a little bit and then maybe drag this one down a little bit. All right, so uh, we have our spin kind of how we want it. Let's see if we crank it up some. Probably like 17 is going to be the best look. And we can drag these points in. If you drag these points in, you'll see what happens. It only uh, it only blurs inside those points. So, like the outside of the tire looks all wonky now. So we need to make sure 
got your uh, hit in the whole tire. <clears throat> so I have that. Now let's go ahead and do one on the back. Now the back's going to be a little bit more difficult, so we kind of got to guess about right there would be the center point. And then we're going to bring these things in and kind of rotate it a little bit. Maybe drag it out. And I'm not worried about what it's doing with the car. Okay, so don't worry about that because we're going to mask it. Do like so. And do we want a little bit more on the back tire? Let's bring it up to like 19 or 20 and see. I don't think it's really... Maybe a little bit more. Maybe let's bring it down some. I'm just kind of trial and error it a little bit and see. Um, I think. I think that's probably about what I want. And then we could put another one on this tire here. You don't really see it too much, but just for sakes, or what do they call that? Giggles and you know what's. All right. We'll just say that's going to work out fine. Okay. And then this back tire here, yeah, might as well. We'll go ahead and do one on this one also. Not super concerned with it because this back tire, we're going to do some tweaking anyways. All right, so, so all of our spins are put on there, and that's going to take a second to render. Okay, <clears throat> so now we have our spins rendered. Now, what I want to do here is um, go ahead and just name this uh, wheel, wheel spin, something like that, and then this is the original copy. Now we need to put a layer mask on here, uh, grab a brush, make sure we're on black, and I have my flow down at 35%, but uh, we can probably crank it, crank it up to one hundo. And we'll just bring back in everything that we need to bring back in. Okay. All right, so everything's masked out pretty good. Let's go ahead and come in here. We don't need the where the engine and transmission is. And I'm just going to kind of do one small line around the, the tire so we don't have any there. All right, so I think that looks good. I don't think I missed anything. All right, so we have our before and after. We have some wheel spin, maybe right here a little bit. And that helps a little bit too when you just kind of turn on the before, and then you can kind of look and see if you missed any spots. But I think that, I think this will work okay uh, for what we're doing, at least anyway, so it's not perfect. Um, now we want to, we have to add some more um, shadows in here because it's it still doesn't look right, right? So let's uh, let's grab a new layer. Let's uh, make sure we have a black foreground color, and then we have our brush. And I'm just going to go and create a spot uh, about like this. Control T, and then I'm going to squish it down a little bit. And I'm holding Shift while I'm doing this, so I'm just kind of put it under the tire. Make it a little bit bigger. 
Let me like so. Does that look right? Okay, that looks a little bit better. And then let's do another one over here. I just use my soft brush and hit black just one time and control T. And then you hold down shift and you can spread this out a little bit. It's, it's kind of like cheater shadows, but it, but it works. So we have, um, if we group these together and turned it off and on, you would see. Okay, it looks a little more realistic. I still probably could use some on the side here. So let's uh, control shift G, ungroup those. Let's do one more um, right here and control T. Let's uh, squish it down and put it right here. Maybe spread it out a little bit. And that's too much. Maybe let's change the button now. Uh, let's just make it bigger. Let's hold shift. Like so. And just play around with your opacity a little bit. I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect. Because we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna do some other things around that area. All right, so this is the basis. This is the basis of it. So we have, um, let's group all these. Or, yeah, let's just group them, and then we'll just call this uh, shadow. All right. So now what I want to do is, since we have everything done, we're going to click on this top layer, and I'm going to merge everything, everything that we did into one layer. So uh, Control, Shift, Alt, and E or on a Mac it's command shift option E and that just made us one one layer right so we have everything on this one layer and underneath that we're gonna add a, a solid color of black all right so this is pure black we'll hit OK and I want to just because I mess up sometimes I'm gonna hold down alt and make a copy of this and drag it underneath that it's just a backup copy all right, so now on this layer, what we're going to do is we're going to grab our elliptical marquee tool, and we're just going to drag, and I'm holding the space bar to move it around to kind of feel it out. We're going to drag about right, maybe like this. We'll try this first, and then hit your mask button, and then we're going to feather it about two or three hundred. Let's see what that looks like. 154. I think that looks good and good enough. Because if we go more than maybe let's try 300. Type in 300. I think that's 3,000. 300. I kind of like that. So, like this is without the mask. And then this is with the with the feathered mask. It's just a little cool trick that I I don't know how I learned it. Probably YouTube. Um, so yeah, I like this a lot. Now, what can we do now? See, that's why I was saying like that blur doesn't really matter a whole bunch. I mean, you can you could go back and and restart on that background blur layer and you know, make it perfect, but for for what we're ending up with, this right here, it doesn't really it doesn't really matter. Alright, so now we want to add uh some text. Do we want to add text first or do we want to play around with this? Let's make a copy of this. So let's hold down Alt and drag down. It's gonna make a copy. Let's turn this off and then I'm gonna destructively just apply this layer mask to this one. All right, so as you see, all that is is that with the black background behind it. Okay, so that black background creates um, so that black background creates your your effect technically. All right, so <clears throat> what do I want to do with this? Let's take this and this one, and whoops, I hit shift. Control and let's merge these together. So this is just going to end up being 
um, one image. All right, so now let's take this. Let's take this into Camera Brawl and do some minor adjustments to it. Okay, so now that we're in Camera Brawl, we kind of see by our histogram that everything, I mean, it's a little on the darker side, which is fine um, for what we're doing. But if you want to tweak out, like if you looked up here, your basic, we brought our exposure up to where it really needs to be is this, technically. And we can add some clarity, add some contrast. Play with our highlights a little bit, and then shadows. I, w I want shadows because it's going to, like, if we open up our shadows, then we're going to have some issues down here again. So we're kind of covering things up. We're, we're cheating. Okay, all right. So I think I like this where it is. Maybe we can darken our blacks down. Be like so. All right, and then let's just go into our detail and we'll uh, do a little bit of noise reduction because I know it does have some noise in it. Okay, and every every image is going to be different, but anyways, uh, there's that. And then let's make these blues pop a little bit more. Let's go in our saturation and crank up our saturation of our blues a little bit. Does that look better? I think it does. And then on our luminance, we can make it darker on our blues. You got to watch how far you go though. Okay, I think, I think we're good there. What do you think? I think that's good there. Okay, we're going to call that a day. So we'll go ahead and hit OK. And you see the before, and then when this hits, you'll see the after, and it popped it out pretty good. Okay, so let's add some, let's just add a little bit of text here. Okay, so we know, um, let's see, this guy's name is Michael Brand, I think, yeah, Michael Brand. So let's add some text. Uh, so we'll go to our type tool. And the font, the font I'm going to use on this one is Montserrat Extra Bold Italic. Montserrat Extra Bold Italic. And we're going to go ahead and change this to white so we can see what we're doing. And OK. OK, so my computer. All right, so we'll go ahead and lay down a type. Here and we'll just put a uh, brand. What's his last name? Hit enter. Uh, Control T, and then if you hold your Alt or Alt or Option, and drag on this middle. We're gonna just drag this out to about that size, and I want to put it in the corner a little bit like so. And we have that. And then now let's add some layer styles to this. So double click on it. And your layer styles panel will open up. Now, if you um, if you don't see all of these, uh, actually, I have a bunch of different ones. I'm going to just reset the default list. Uh, if you don't have all of these options shown, if you click on your effects button here, and just click on show all effects, and then we'll, we'll show up. All right, so I want to add a little bit of a bevel and emboss. And let's see, let's reset this to default. So I have 100 and the size. Let's see, I don't want a whole lot, maybe like four or five pixels. Okay, it's kind of hard to see what we're doing. Let's put some color on it. Okay, gradient overlay. Click on it. Let's click on our first stop, and I want this blue here. And our second stop. It's weird that I already have these colors out. If we go into this blue there, it's kind of just using the colors of the car, right? So we have that. Let's reset the alignment. So 
hundred percent ninety. You know, if we move it up or down, what happens? What do we like? I think I want a little bit up like that. All right, so I like that. I like that a lot. Let's go back to Babylon and Boss, and let's see if we add just a little bit more. 13, what about depth? Don't know, let's bring our highlights up here and then let's change our highlight color to something on the car. Let's put on normal. Let's put on linear dodge ad. Okay. A little bit darker. Okay, this is a really subtle, um, subtle effect here, which you can kind of see what's going on here. Okay, and then our shadows. Let's drag it out. And this is all to taste. I mean, you can do it however you want, but I think I want this, like so, and. Do I want to do a drop shadow yet? Maybe. Let's go ahead and put a drop shadow on it. And I'm going to crank the, the opacity to 100. And I'm going to, you can drag this around to where you want it. I'm going to drag it down to like here. Maybe like so. Um, but I want to bring the size up a little bit. So it's just kind of creating a little, like that little blur that you see. Okay, I think we're done with that one. Now, <clears throat> let's put, um, let's do another text here of the N, it's a SD455. So let's go ahead and add those texts. Uh, SD-455, enter, uh, control T, maybe let's make it, I kind of want it on the, are a little bit but not let's go like this okay so we're going to add some layer styles to this but i want to mask it first so i want to make it look like this is behind the car so we already cut the car out so all we got to do is hit control and click on that car and then we'll make a selection and then we can come up to our text and just uh if you hold down alt or option and hit your mask it will mask it out so it looks like it's behind the car now, if you unclick this mask, you uncheck it and then click on your, the text layer itself and control T and you move it around, no matter where you move it on the car, the car mask is still going to be there. Okay, so I want it right here. Basically that. And then I want to use the same layer styles from here. So if you just hold down Alt or Option and click on this effects and drag it up, and it will it'll apply it to those. Okay, so the only thing is this text is a little bit smaller, so that bevel and emboss we can go down a little bit on. So let's take this down to maybe half, so six. And maybe let's take this down to 250. Okay, all right, so that's better. So we have that going on. Now, <clears throat> once we have this how we want it, uh, let's convert to a smart object. Convert to a smart object because I want to, I want to, I want to warp this. All right, so I'm going to go to edit, uh, transform, warp, and I'm just going to use this arc. So I'm going to arc it. And, okay, I did exactly what I didn't want it to do. So let's uh, hit this note and let's control Z. Let's just delete this mask. Let's convert it to a smart object. And then warp it, edit, transform, warp, arc, 
Maybe not so much. Maybe about right there. I hit the check mark, that'll accept it. And then we can grab our mask and mask it. Uh, control click. Control click, I said. Okay, why this is in slow motion, I don't know. And then we're just going to make a layer mask. So we're going to hold Alt and click. And now we have it behind there. All right. So that is that much of it. Um, basically, that's kind of it. Uh, you can add some other things to it, but it's just just a simple, a very simple design. So we're grabbing this logo. And it's going to place that logo. And let's just make it smaller and we'll put it up here. Like so. And then we will just use that mask. So that's kind of like the importance of, of doing a... Like doing a car cut out and just leaving it there. So we have that. Um, what else? What else can we do? Maybe you want to put some texture on the text instead of it being all smooth like. Let's do file, place embedded, desktop, new projects, textures, and grunge. And. Maybe we want some like a metallic texture. Let's try this one out and see what we have happening with this one. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this will work. Let's bring our opacity down. And I'm going to hold shift and size this up a little bit to what I think will look good. And like I said, this is going to be personal preference. Yeah, I think that's going to be that's going to be it. Let's bring our opacity all the way up, and then this is where we're going to have a problem. All right, so if we try to do a clippy mask, we had to create clippy mask. You don't see anything. It's because there's a gradient overlay on this. All right, so if you turn that gradient overlay off that texture will show through and if we turn it back on you can't see it and so a couple different things you could do you can grab this layer and just put it in a group and then make sure your texture is out of the group and create a copy mask like so but then it looks like that so you got to change the blend mode of this to overlay or soft light something like that overlay all right so you have that you can do it that way or you can just turn your text into a smart object and it will it will work out okay so let's go ahead and put this on the sd455 it already is a smart object so we can do alt and drag up here and we'll hit create clipping mask and you can see that it hasn't done anything that's because it's all the way down here Control t let's drag it up here and Boom, we have some uh, texture on that. All right. And I think that's probably about it. I mean, we could we could go on and on and just do some weird things to it, but that's just a nice little poster that kind of probably needs something in this corner here, but, but that's it. Maybe we'll um maybe we'll put down here some more text like you know, let's grab I think this is a 73 Firebird. I'm not exactly sure. Not exactly sure for sure, but let's just call it a 1973 Pontiac Firebird. Go like so, and then maybe uh, Control T. Let's Scooch it over, maybe scooch it up a little bit, like so. And you could, um, 
you could use the layer style from here. Let's copy it, copy layer style. And then we could paste the layer style on this also, right click paste layer style. Um, but it looks really wonky because the bevel and emboss. Okay, so as you go smaller, as your text is smaller, you need to ease up on these numbers here. Okay, and then this gradient overlay, maybe we don't want to, maybe we'll just use the gradient overlay, but bring down the opacity a little bit. So it looks like so. I think that looks pretty good like that. And I think we'll just leave it at this. I mean, I could probably, we could probably do some stuff with, I don't know, maybe some, maybe control shift all E, everything that we have together. And then underneath that, let's do a gradient layer. Let's do a gradient layer. And let's use these um, basics. Let's use this one here. And then let's change this color to maybe something a little bit like so. There is some separation in it, but maybe a little bit darker. Like so. We'll hit OK. And we'll hit OK. And then on this, let's just go ahead and grab a mask. And let's grab a brush. And we could do a couple different ways. Let's do a let's do a big brush and see what this kind of looks like if we just kind of go like this. This might look alright, it might not, I don't know. Eh, kind of, yeah, kind of, no. Kind of don't like it, kind of do. Um, let's just delete it. Let's try something else. We'll grab, um, I have these, um, <coughs> they're like long, long ink strokes brushes, but they kind of have these like jaggedies to them. So if we're, make sure we're on black, we can kind of create some stuff like, like that. I mean, I don't really like it, but if you go up and down like that, it's not going to look right. So let's see, delete layer mask. Let's add a layer mask. Let's see if we make this bigger. We make it bigger and then we use our arrow keys and kind of maybe maybe not I don't think I like this all right let's just delete this I think it was cooler how we did it first or actually I like it like this with nothing but but we're just playing around, so once you're done playing around, you can play around some more, right? Play and play and play. So let's make this small, and then, is that hitting it? Maybe we'll go right here, and then I'm going to hold down shift and do a... So if you hold down shift, it's going to kind of do like a straightish line. Alright, so I think that's a pretty cool look. <laughs> Doesn't have to, I mean, you don't have to do that, but that's that's just that. Kind of helps fill in that. Maybe let's do, um, let's do another layer. And I want to play around with this. Um, let's grab, let's see, I have some lightning brushes. And I, I'm not going to use it as lightning because it's going to look stupid. Um, <laughs> So let's grab this and then let's do a uh, filter blur. Let's do motion blur on this and try to get about this angle. Something like so. Hit OK. 
And then let's double click on that and then let's do a gradient overlay on top of it. Maybe like this. And then for that, I want to grab our car again. I can control click on the car and we'll alt or option and alt and click on the mask and it will take it off the car so that's just a little just some little extra lines in there and we could duplicate this control j and then let's unhook the mask and then control t and then let's flip this horizontally and we'll drag this one over here like so does that look right? I think it does. I think that's cool, but I think we need some more lines here. Let's grab a new, a new layer, and then let's do something like that. And then we can do that motion blur. It's the same one, so we can just hit the hit the letter, and then we'll do our gradient overlay on this one. Bam, and. Maybe we'll put this on like so, and then we can grab our little mask, hold down Alt, and drag it up, and boom, you have that mask like so. And we now have this. All right, I like it. I think that uh, I think that will stop and call it a day on this one. So hopefully, you learned something out of all my mumbo jumbo rambling i just get into different little weird um, patterns and i think i think that looks pretty neat i think that looks pretty neat you know you could do another um, camera raw filter over the whole thing too or you can come down here and you know maybe add a curves layer to everything and just kind of tweak it out a little bit maybe like so Maybe not. Maybe that's too much. It's just real subtle. Or you could, you know, add a, a color look up to it. Color look up and then maybe do like this night from day look to it and kind of tweak this out and then maybe just grab the car mask and replace layer mask, yes. And then you kind of just darkened everything down and brought the car up. maybe something like so I kind of like the colors like that uh, but anyways all right so uh, we will see you on the next one um, I'll, I'll put some links down below make sure you go to the website um, there's going to be a bunch of uh, more tutorials on there and maybe some uh, some freebies maybe I'll give this thing away free um, just check it out links are in the description and thanks for watching